Uh, another great game for us. Uh, again, started with pitching. Uh, Mahoney, Jones, and Veach were all extremely good tonight. Uh, defense was great behind them. And then we had the two big swings that, that gave us the five runs. So real proud of that group. They competed their ass off today. Uh, and they won the game because of it. Mark, you mentioned the pitching, and I know that uh, you know you wanted uh, you send Jones out there for the ninth, but just how impressive was it for not only Veach to come in but to throw nine straight strikes, and especially against that that heart of the lineup? Yeah, you know, some of the toughest decisions you have as a manager and as a pitching coach is when do you make the move? When do you go from a guy that's that's cruising? to hand the ball to the closer. That's a big decision. If it doesn't work, you're the idiot. If it works, then you look like you know what you're doing. Um, but he was cruising, and we were going to try to try to play it both ways. You know, He was cruising. We're going to put him out there for the ninth. But if a guy gets on base and it looks like he he's, he's just doesn't quite have it still, then you go to your closer. And that's exactly what we did. And, and Veach came, out and came in and was, was tremendous. What did you see from Eli tonight? He doesn't have, obviously, dominating stuff, but just fills the zone. What what about him makes him so hard to hit? What'd you well, see? Eli is a guy that's 92-93 with some movement on the fastball and very good command. The ball, you notice when he throws the fastball, it's generally at the knees, either on the inside black or the outside black. And then he throws a really good slider in the mid-80s that he also locates down and away generally. Uh, and it's just, he's a hard guy to square up. And he throws strikes, uh, one walk in three innings. That's what you need. You need strike throwers that have good command and enough stuff that when they get in good counts, they can put guys away. And, and that's what he is. Uh, Mark Jackson obviously had some really good moments this year, but when you look at tonight, he fought through a couple of tricky situations. Yeah. I mean, what were you seeing him in those moments? I mean, it seemed like Will kind of did similar things last night. Is there any parallel at all? And I guess what were you seeing from Jack tonight, well, too? What you get with those guys is poise, and you get guys that are competitors. Uh, they know that in the, in the middle of a big crisis like that, when the, the bases get loaded or you've got runners in scoring position, you know, the key is to, to kind of slow down a little bit, breathe a little bit better. And, and just make pitches and execute pitches. And they're both, they've pitched enough and they're old enough now and, and they're competitive enough now that they know how to do that. They know how to get out of those tough spots. And sometimes younger guys don't and they have to work through that. Those guys are older guys that, that know how to, how to manage situations. Uh, kind of sticking with Jack and big spots. He had Justin go out for a mountain visit. I think the time run was up in the fifth. He had Jones warming up. Kind of what made you stick with him in that at that moment? And then what did you see when he got the double play ball to get out of the inning? Yeah, just you know, it's it's most of that usually is gut feel. Um, you know, how's your how's your guy feel? What are you seeing with your eyes? Uh, is it is it the right matchup in terms of how the, who, which hitter he's facing and what kind of success he's had up until then? Uh, most of that usually is gut feel. Sometimes, you know, Parker goes out to the mound and, and looks a guy in the eye to tr before he makes his decision what we want to do. So uh, I think we played our cards right today, uh, and the guys really executed and, and did what we needed them to do. Yeah, that's, that's basically what I wanted to ask, but I, I, I do want to follow up on Jack. You kind of challenged him last week to, to go a little bit deeper and, and to be a little bit better in those big situations. A, were you happy with, with that? And then B, what, what, how did Waldrop settle in uh, later, later in the game after the home runs? Yeah, so first with Jack, you know, the great thing about when you have good relationships with your players and, and, you, and you really know them is you know kind of who can you challenge, who do you need to pat on the back. Jack's a guy because he's so competitive that every now and then you can really challenge him. And, and I think him getting to 91 pitches today, you know, we'd like to see that be six innings. But the fact that he was able to get out to 91 will be good because it's something he can build on, you know, hopefully the next time he pitches. And then maybe we get him to 100 and he gives us six or, or maybe even seven with that. Um, Waldrop, I mean, the stuff's electric. Uh, we did a good job early on on the fastball. Uh, our damage, for the most part, I think, early on was off the fastball. And then he really started to feature the, this, the off-speed stuff. And once he did that, I mean, it's a dirty pitch. It, it's a first-round pitch. And we struggled with it a little bit, but everybody will struggle with that pitch when he's commanding it. Uh, when he gets into trouble is when he's not landing the, the off-speed pitches, and then he has to throw the fastball. Um, but he started to get in a rhythm where he was throwing that pitch for strikes. And you've got to tip your cap there. Is that the or? Yeah, it was the splitter. Most of the time, it was the splitter. Yeah, Coach, obviously injuries are no stranger to this time of season, but when you go out there with no McGillis, no LaCroix, uh, no Cassis, just what does it say about the depth and talent of this group to, to get this series closer? Yeah, I'm so proud of them. Again, and you could, set, you could add Hall to that because Hall, for most of the year, was our Saturday guy. 
And so you're dealing without four, four guys that are elite performers there. You've got a 16 home run guy. You've got a guy with 10 home runs in 20 games. And you've got a guy hitting 320. And you've got arguably, you know, one of the better pitchers in the league. So the fact that we still were able to, able to overcome all that, I'm really proud of the guys that, that stepped in and played today um, because we were still able to win. And then we won anyway. Mark, a couple for you. For tomorrow, do you look at Becker again, kind of keep the routine, or Hicks, somebody like that? Do you have a decision at this point? Yeah, I mean, it's we're going to announce that probably either later tonight or first thing in the morning, but uh, you could probably assume that we'll stay status quo from what we did. And also update on Cassis? Uh, Cassis will not play tomorrow. It's a lung issue. It's not a rib issue. It's a lung issue. Uh, the doctors are hopeful that he'll be back next week. Huh? Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I agree. Veach, obviously – that ninth inning was really impressive. I think he threw seven or eight straight change-ups at one point. What makes that pitch so tough to hit for that kind of, I guess, those hitters? The yeah, well, and, and I'll tell you what, I thought the key to the, to the outing was the fact that he established his fastball 92-93 for strikes at the knees early because the last time he pitched, you could tell the team we were facing was just basically sitting on the change-up thinking he was going to throw at every pitch. And so the fact that he was able to establish the fastball when you see it to the hitter in front of you when you're on deck, you're like, okay, I guess I have to respect the fastball too. And when you have to respect his fastball at 93, one, that makes the change up better in and of itself. But it's a special pitch. It's, it's a low spin rate. You know, you hear all the time about high spin rates. It's an incredibly low spin rate for a pitch. And it's just the movement on it and the time it takes to get to the plate is just something hitters don't see. Hey, Mark, uh, you guys hung up 13 on this team uh, yesterday. You come in, have an early lead, you sustain it. But what's your message to the guys to finish it off and sweep this series tomorrow? What are you going to be in their ear about? Well, we just play the same baseball every day. Come out and, and pitch well, throw strikes, uh, play really good defense behind pitchers, and let's score as many runs as we can with our philosophies, which is take good at bats and, and be disciplined and all those things. So that message does not change. It's just we get to a, another chance to do it tomorrow. Any other questions? All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.